More often than not, when flat earthers calculate the height of the curvature between two points on Earth, they're simply wrong. See, they oftentimes go by this idea that the height of Earth's curvature is 8 inches for every mile to the square of the mile, which is simply wrong. See, they got that from a really old book called Zetetic Cosmogony, and the person who wrote Zetetic Cosmogony got that from certain land surveyors who do, or at least did, actually use that to estimate the height of Earth's curvature. But it's just that, an equation to estimate it for certain distances, mind you, because the further away you go, the less and less accurate it is. An accurate equation would not be exponential, but instead sinusoidal, because we're dealing with a circle and not a parabola. Here is the actual equation that you would use to calculate the height of an arc given the arc length and the radius, in this instance being the radius of the Earth and the distance between these two points on Earth's surface, where h is the arc height, r is the radius, and s is the arc length, keeping in mind that this is in radians, not degrees. Now I didn't find this exact equation, but I adapted it from other equations that I found online. So trying it out and comparing it to this online calculator I found shows that it's accurate. So to illustrate the kind of problems this causes, I was going to respond to a video, but it turns out that video pretty much got every single bit of information from 200 Proofs the Earth is Not a Spinning Ball by Eric Dubay and his research isn't exactly original either. We'll get to that later. But let's dive into it, starting here. The distance from which various lighthouse lights around the world are visible at sea far exceeds what can be found on a ball Earth 25,000 miles in circumference. For example, the Dunkirk light, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, in southern France at an altitude of 194 feet is visible from a boat, 10 feet above sea level, 28 miles away. Spherical trigonometry dictates that if the Earth was a globe with a given curvature of 8 inches per mile squared, this light should be hidden 190 90 feet below the horizon. Whereas if we use calculations that are actually accurate, we find that the height of the curve between these two points would be 130 feet or so. So the top of this lighthouse would clearly be above the horizon. The Port Nicholson light in New Zealand is 420 feet above sea level and visible from 35 miles away, where it should be 220 feet below the horizon. Where in actuality, the height of the curve would be about 204 feet. So again, the top of this lighthouse would be above the horizon. The Erigo light in Norway is 154 feet above high water and visible from 28 statute miles where it should be 230 feet below the horizon, where in actuality the height of the curve between these two points is 130 feet or so. Again, it should be clearly visible. The light in Madras is 132 feet high, visible from 28 miles away, should be 250 feet below line of sight. In actuality, the height of the curve is, again, 130 feet. You should be able to see it from that distance. The Cordonin light in France is 207 feet high and visible from 31 miles away. And at that distance, the height of the curve is 160 feet. You should be able to see it. Light at Cape Bonavista is 150 feet above sea level and visible at 35 miles, whereas the height of the curve is 204 feet, which, granted, should be below the horizon at that distance. But how do I know that you actually can see this from that far away? I'm not exactly given a source here, and I couldn't actually find any information about this lighthouse's range. But given that some information, which we're about to get to, is indeed inaccurate, I have my doubts. The lighthouse steeple of St. Botolph's Parish Church in Boston is 290 feet tall, visible from over 40 miles away, whereas the height of the curvature between those two points is 267 feet or so you should be able to see it. The Isle of Wight lighthouse in England is 180 feet high and can be seen from up to 42 miles away. And I like how this says a distance at which modern astronomers say the light should fall 996 feet below line of sight. First of all, do you know what astronomers are? And second of all, that's way too low. At a distance of 42 miles on Earth, we would expect 294 feet of curvature, which granted would put a 180 foot high lighthouse below the horizon. Not that far, 
but it would. But this one, I could look up and I could find information about it. Now, first of all, there are several lighthouses on the Isle of Wight, none of which are 180 feet high. But I had a suspicion that this was actually from Zetetic Cosmogony, as again, too many Flat Earth arguments are. So I looked it up and sure enough, here it is. And it specifies St. Catherine's Lighthouse, which is actually 135 feet above sea level, and its range is 25 nautical miles, which is pretty much exactly what we'd expect. The Cape Le Aculus lighthouse in South Africa is 238 feet above sea level, can be seen for over 50 miles, where again this actually would fall below the horizon. Not by 1400 feet, but it would be below the horizon. But if you look it up, this is actually Cape Aculus lighthouse, not Le Aculus, which is the name of the town that is in, and I'm also probably pronouncing that wrong. But it's only 102 feet above sea level, and its range is about 30 nautical miles, which again is pretty much exactly what we'd expect. Now I could go on, there's lots more of these, but the story is the same with all of them. So the lesson to be learned here is 8 inches for every mile to the square of the mile is just wrong. Only works as an estimation for certain short distances. And Zetetic Cosmogony is a flawed book. But that's gonna be it for this video. Join me next week where I'll alphabetize my tech decks. See you there.